Danny Dannon's statements stir a sense of duty rooted in defense, resilience, and swift, decisive action. His defense of Israel, coupled with a vow that Iran will face, painful conventions, underscores a commitment to justice and the unyielding defense of his country. Dannon's rhetoric is framed around self-defense and retaliation, positioning these as necessary responses to hostile forces. His portrayal of Iran as a terrorist state not only justifies immediate military action, but links the regime to a global network of terrorism, making it a clear target for strong intervention. An attack on this scale has not been seen since the Blitz of London. 10 million people were forced into bomb shelters. Imagine the entire population of New York City in 10 minutes have to seek shelter. Children, babies, elderly, that's what happened in Israel. The Islamic regime in Iran has now shown the world its true face. They are a terrorist state. For years, they have armed terrorists and rogue states. They are responsible for the death of innocent civilians across the globe, from Europe's war zones to terror attacks in the Middle East, from embassies in Latin America to assault on U.S. personnel. Iran's blood-stained fingerprints are everywhere. Until now, they have hidden behind proxies, but the mask has dropped. They have exposed themselves directly, launching hundreds of missiles into civilian areas. Their evil is now laid bare for all to see. I have called for an emergency session of the Security Council to convene as soon as possible to discuss this unprecedented attack and to issue a clear, unequivocal condemnation of Iran. Let me be very clear. We will defend our people. We will act. Iran will soon feel the consequences of their actions. The response will be painful. The image of 10 million people forced into bomb shelters amplifies the fear and vulnerability of the defenseless, children, babies, the elderly, caught in the crossfire of conflict. This powerful visual taps into a collective anxiety, a primal need for protection when external threats loom large. Dannon's narrative aligns with a broader call for military readiness, where confronting evil head-on is seen as the only viable option. His message is clear. Waiting or negotiating with aggressors only increases the danger to innocent lives. In this narrative, the public gravitates towards strong leadership, someone who will exact swift punishment on those who harm civilians. Dannon's promise of a severe response to Iran is seen as essential for maintaining peace through strength, reinforcing Israel's standing as a nation that demands both respect and fear from its enemies. This belief that appeasement only emboldens aggression fuels the idea that balance can only be restored through decisive and forceful retaliation. By vividly illustrating the scope of an attack with millions scrambling for safety, Dannon exposes a raw vulnerability that resonates deeply with the Israeli public and global audiences alike. The image evokes both empathy and a demand for robust action, a sentiment that reinforces the psychological need for security and protection. Dannon's framing of Iran as a terrorist regime responsible for global violence simplifies the complex nature of war into a stark moral conflict, good versus evil, defense versus aggression. For those seeking clarity amidst the chaos, this offers psychological relief, a clear justification for action. His promise of a painful response to Iran's provocations not only fulfills a desire for justice, but serves as a reassurance that those who inflict harm will face the consequences. In this way, Dannon taps into both the emotional and psychological dimensions of conflict, galvanizing support through a message that merges strength with moral righteousness. 